Quarry downstairs, chickens and eggs upstairs. <laughs> It's Monday morning, it's 10 to 7, and I'm in the yard. It is freezing, two degrees to be exact. Over the weekend, something was brought to my attention. There appears to be someone who has an Asheville tattoo because they are serious. I don't know if this is real, and I don't really want to ask the question. And I've been trying to think about this like an adult. And the only way I can think to see if this is true is for Terry to get a matching tattoo and for us to compare the picture with the tattoo that Terry gets, and then we can work out if this gentleman, in fact, has got himself an Asheville tattoo. Left the yard for a meeting. I've said it in the past, and I'm saying it again. There's a tendency within the haulage industry, if something bad happens to someone else's lorry, like a lorry goes over or it's in a bad accident, falls in a ditch or some ground gives way underneath it and it gets stuck, the picture goes round and everyone thinks it's hilarious. Don't send me the pictures. There's no picture of any damage to anyone's lorry that somebody's gonna send me and I'm gonna find it funny because I know what it feels like and I know that if it happens to Asheville, that picture will be going around receiving the same response and people laughing at it and thinking it's hilarious. They're not thinking about if anyone was hurt, the driver or machine operators or people close by. And something like that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back in certain size businesses or even in a big business, if it's a really bad accident, it could mean that people don't want to insure you in the future. So I'll say it again, don't send me pictures of people's lorries going over. I don't find it interesting and I don't find it funny but something I do find interesting. We are roughly 28 days after we launch the personal channel. So this means that Frighty is correct. Frighty will choose two separate challenges for myself and Meds. You guys are gonna get to suggest it. I am going to play ball, but don't be silly. Like I said before that Meds is gonna offload the train because he doesn't know how to and the train's gonna get derailed and my LA60 is gonna get written off and I'm not about to end my days in this industry over a bet. But within reason, I will play ball. Any ideas you have, drop them in the comments for myself and Meds and Frighty will try to pick them. Nice QPR flag in that lorry. Heading back to the yard. It's Tuesday morning. I'm at Gatwick Airport with the video team. The time is 7.34 a.m. We are heading to St. Lucia. Just looking for a spot of breakfast somewhere so we can eat as much food as possible to eat as little plain food as possible because we don't want to spend our first days on the toilet. On the way here in the cab, I was working and I saw a nice email come through which went to our salesman, Darren, a client, um, complimenting our service and saying how good it was to work with us. It's always great to receive those type of emails. Now that that job has finished, Ben has popped down to collect the machine. Now it's not a machine that we had in stock. We borrowed it from B&W Plant Hire, so we've collected it and now dropped it back to them. Cheers, bud. Brighty and I have some video bits to go over, preparing for when we're in St. Lucia and preparing for the Daniel Asheville personal channel. Loads to talk about, discuss and try and make preparations and put like rough outlines in place. Also on this journey, I have a number of appraisals I need to go through. I spent many a year doing things based on gut. When you're operating at a lower level, say, right, I'm gonna go and buy this. It didn't really affect the company that much and you could always find a way to sell your way out of it. The sort of plant and machinery I'm looking at, the value of them is so much and the money that's gotta be borrowed, balance it all up with the interest, see how much money we're gonna make, but see how long it takes to pay it back. Because what you don't wanna do is just take on a new massive piece of kit put it in the yard and stop operating and just make a bigger machine. With the help of Donica, the, our CFO, and with the knowledge I already have from the industry and speaking to people who already use the sort of plant and machinery I'm talking about. But what I find when I do these appraisals is that more costs just keep getting costs and costs. Every time you remember, here's another cost, here's another cost, here's another cost. Going through a small transition, it's always gonna be about the service, the personal touch, about the relationship between people, but the numbers, are now playing a bigger part. Time to take off and head to St. Lucia.
We are officially in St. Lucia. Got to rent a car. The journey wasn't too bad. Got plenty of work done on the plane. Feels good and I feel relaxed. Today in the yard, let's see how Terry got on. Tuesday afternoon, quite a productive day in the yard. We've got trains tomorrow and Thursday. Tomorrow's is the material that we offload and haul for somebody else. Thursday's our own sand and gravel train coming in. So we've just scraped off the level crossing. A little bit of bad weather last week, which meant that the ground was quite wet. Just tidy everything up. Boys are starting to get ready now to load lorries for tomorrow. Volumetrics will be coming back soon. Loading cement. Bit of a standard day, really. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Not all of us are in St. Lucia in the sunshine. Some of us are actually here doing a bit of work. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, that was a roadside stop. I haven't seen one of those here in years. Not the last time or time before I was here. So there must be something going on in the local area that looked like the combined efforts of the St. Lucian Special Forces, the SSU and the police force. Wednesday. We're not in the yard, are we? We're about to go on an exploratory mission. Behind me over here is a plot of land I've owned for many years where I plan to do an Asheville Heights development. The development's on hold at the moment, but I'm gonna go exploring and see what I can find. Oh my goodness. Flashback to a picture of this site when I completely cleared it. Looks like I got a psychic. Come here, let's go. Let's go and have a look at this land. I'm saying you're not on it. It's like Jurassic Park in it. All right, we've got to try and go there. Hey, no, there ain't a space above me. Yeah, like here, yeah, where you are, where you are. So we're kind of lost. So we're going to throw the drone up and have a look at the screen on the drone and see if we can work out where we are. Nice. Am I walking in the right or wrong way? Yeah, yeah I think right. Because there, there's a fella that's got horses up there. Yeah. The land has missed me, boy. Oh my goodness. Great outdoors, eh? That didn't go quite according to plan, so we're gonna throw the drone up and see if there's a better vantage point that we can get. And while we're doing that, I'm told that the train is just reversing into the yard and it's full of sharp sand. You didn't tell me that Kaylee Plant was in St. Lucia. We've always had machines out there. They were dropped off last week. They're pulling them houses down around you there. Oh, oh, you're doing a demo job. Is this the latest tipper on your fleet, is it? That's a new one we bought last week. What lorry is this? Tell me. ERS. No, this says it on the dash, but what is it? Tell me about the engine. What engine is in it? It's got a Cummins. It's got a bit of greenery growing out of it. Look at that rubber suspension as well. Hey, that's even more than that. Is How much will you give me for this if I could get this for you? I wouldn't give you 10 quid for it. It's an ERF. I don't have ERF. If I could get this and bring it back, how much are you going to give me for it? Two grand. The shipping's going to cost me two grand to bring it back? Yeah, no disrespect, you better get back. You better not stay out there too long or you'll have nothing to come back to. That's an old high taxi, that's one of the long levers in it. Is that an FH behind you? Turn your head round. Yeah, an FH. Yeah, that's the worst one of them. The worst one of all your machines? No, the worst machine to have, an FH. Why is it a very bad machine? Fiat engine. Ah. What about your mate today, Foxy? What happened? He was spotted in Enfield Town today. You befriended Foxy, the two of you run off together, now he's nicking your work in your manor, see? That'll teach you, won't it? Why have you got all this scrap in your back garden? <laughs> you've got enough here without looking at it over there. 
That looks like that Air Lake 62, doesn't it, that one? <laughs> If you had an F8, your hair would definitely go grey. My hair don't go grey, I'll just lose it. Yeah, you'd be completely bald if you had an F8. Well, I thought I'd check in. I know you miss me when I'm away. Enjoy it. All right, Enjoy mate. It. I'll see you later. Thank see you, bro. Yeah. So Michael runs a lot of vintage kit. The collection's 40. So I saw this tipper and I thought maybe Michael might want it. But then I realised that all this kit here, this will be the latest equipment Kaylee Plant had just putting out on hire. Credit to Michael. He knew the model numbers just by looking at the machine. This is somewhere with a workshop over there, and I believe these old machines, the lads here are using parts off these to do repairs on newer machines. And at the front over here, it looks like they're selling used ones. So keep these, take the parts off, don't waste anything. That's the St. Lucian way with the fitters and mechanics. Uh, excuse me, mate. Um, I'm looking for Asheville Heights. Is that that way or that way? Mm. Right. I'll be on my way then, will I? The sea blast. <laughs> this is where the wind takes the salt from the sea and blows it inland and it rusts metal. The way around this is to specify stainless steel fixtures and fittings. How you doing, bro? I watch your videos all the time. Do you? Thank you. Up to yesterday. Up to yesterday, yeah? <laughs> what did you watch weekly? Yeah, you had the, the trailer coming in and offloading. Much that appreciated, ticket. bro. Right, Thank you very welcome. much. Good Thank night. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's good to know that people in St. Lucia are watching also. That's like the third or fourth person that came up to me today. I was driving on the highway and I couldn't help but see there's a load of concrete jersey barriers here. They're putting rebar in it to use them as lifting eyes. The jersey barriers also have cutouts in the corners. Not sure why that is. And I've seen uh, some bottle mixers coming out of a plant out there. So I think there's a small quarry and they're operating a batch plant. And someone's decided to advertise <laughs> on the side of the jersey barrier here. Anyway, back in the car, back to work. What? That's a new lorry. Gone into a hardware store to just see what's available. I'm going to be reporting back to Moran's to let Moran's know if their game is up to par. Loads of little fixtures and fittings. Iron mongery, locks, hinges, internal and external. Got to watch out for that sea blast. I explained about sea blast in the standalone video. And what, ratchet straps, safety glasses. This Gorilla Gear stuff, my townie loves this. We've got silicone, sealants. Previously, when you were building in St. Lucia, you always used to think about putting everything in a container and bringing all your own stuff. But having a look at what's here, you have everything you need on island. Now, it's already been imported, but the important point is there's a local store which has it all should you need it. These are high quality draw runners, 37 EC dollars, 3.3, so it's about a tenner. That's about right. I'll check with Moran to see how much they're selling them for. <laughs> this is all, all the timber. The snow good and it can't make it because it's all completely bowed. Could you manage trying to build a loft conversion with timber that's bowed like this? Obviously, it's part of the quality control at Home Depot. All the timber that's no good is left over here and the good ones are shifted over to this pile here. <laughs> Imagine you get delivered this banana to site and you're trying to put together a straight wall. Thursday morning, not in the yard, bit of dust cart work going on. Like I said, I'm not in the yard and nor is the train. I just spoke to Terry and he told me that the train has been cancelled, unfortunately. We got another long day of filming and Ben is heading out now to go and collect a three ton machine in Enfield. <laughs> How are you, all right? What, why did the train get cancelled? The train was actually at West Drayton. Oh, wow. On the bridge, and then couldn't get into the yard for whatever. So there's a problem with another freight train. It must have been down at Colbrook or something. You didn't think at that time that you should run around there with a shovel and wheelbarrows and bring it to the yard? Do you know what? It did occur to me, considering I was off most of next week now, that I probably had better things for everyone to do, you know? Goodness me. 
who is going to offload them trains? I've got three different people. All right, well, I'm just checking in. I'm heading down to the south of the island to a quarry. Yeah, we're disappointed to hear the place hasn't burned down yet. Don't worry, Tel. There's still time. Him. All right, thanks, Tel. See you, bye. I was on site earlier talking with a contractor, having a look at a build which should be finished in the next six months. It's really good to speak to people on site here and see how it's going. And the market is a lot busier than I thought it was, which is good. All positive vibes, all's going well, apart from working in the heat. I am a tropical people, but I'm not really used to working in the heat like that, especially not sitting in machines where the sun's beaming down on your head top. You good? Good, good, good. How's things? You're right, yeah? Good, 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 good. Good as Yes, brother. I'm out of there. Take care of yourself, yeah? Bye. <laughs> Mad. Well, it appears the trucking industry of St. Lucia are watching Asheville. So see. <laughs> it's good to see some support in St. Lucia and people keeping up to date with what's going on at Asheville. I love it. I'm in the south of the island in a place called Labry, close to the sea. This is where my family are from. I am in Will Rock Quarry. Now the Wilson family who own it are very close to my family, the Louises, and they were kind enough to show me round. This is a fantastic setup. From here, they supply St. Lucian projects, but also other countries in the region, such as Trinidad and Guyana. The material here is a basalt, which has a very high density but low absorption rate, which means it's fantastic for high specification projects like highways, airport runways, and ports. So yesterday, unfortunately, we missed a blast and the material is being loaded from a 360 excavator into a dump truck, dropped over here, and an excavator is loading the start of the crushing process. Now there's a three stage crushing process and the aggregates are created from crushed stone. We also have a concrete batch plant on site and concrete blocks are also made. So it's a full-on quarry setup. In the past, when I drove the 150 ton Liebherr excavator, click here to watch that video, and when we were at Glen Sander, click here to watch that video, you'll notice that there were benches, but here it was so sloped, there was no room to work. They're just blasting and trying to create space. And once they've managed to create some space, then they're gonna begin to implement benches. They have a mixed fleet. It's a mix of tipper trucks and bottle mixers but the tippers they buy them directly from Sweden or Belgium they said they were talking to the teams there and they've spec'd tippers at a different specification that we would normally have so I believe they're the reinforced chassis that we get on the volumetrics but they have a completely different driveline system going through it it's more expensive in the beginning but it's easier to buy a truck of the top specification then just maintain it for its life and you can probably get 15 years out of those so a couple of years ago when i was in st lucia i was seeing trucks on the highway flat out flat out flat out the trucks were being loaded here with the crushed rock and they were taking them to the port and they were loading a barge and that stone was going to trinidad for a highway project and i remember seeing these trucks up and down all day wondering what they were doing this is everything that i love and i'm seeing it in a very warm and homely environment in st lucia if you would have said to me the road's bad if you're not going to make it in the car i would have said oh no yeah i could do it but i've never i, I didn't realize it was this bad
on one of the lorries getting loaded and each of the trucks have weighers in him. That lorry was loaded with 18 tons of material. Now you may be looking at it thinking, why is there no tailgate? Now that lorry is not going on the public highway. That is a boulder specification. So the body is spec for rock boulders. So the base of it is a 12 mil and the sides are a nine mil. It's only being used in the quarry to move material from A to B. And the material it moved, you can see over here, is a five to 20 mil. The preferred machines here are Volvo and Cat. Now this machine looks like it's a lot older than all the other ones, but they purchased this and this could not stand up to the heat in the quarry. Look at the state of it. It looks much older than the others and there's a Volvo working just over there, what's a lot older. All the other machines from before this have all survived, they're all still going, they're being maintained and this one's now been parked up. And it was brand new when it got it. This quarry is flourishing but it also has a unique way of generating a second stream of income. One which I'm not sure can be seen anywhere else in the world. I'm up on top of the mountain and we have two setups. Over here, we have chickens which are automatically fed and watered and their waste drops through to this area. And this is collected by farmers and used as manure. Over this side, we have a different setup with chickens roaming around, but it takes a lot longer as you have to remove all the chickens from the area in order to go and collect the manure and collect all the eggs. Quarry downstairs, chickens and eggs upstairs. When I go back, to London, I've got to have a word with Michael O'Donovan because from what I can see here, he's gone into the concrete business. This bottle mixer, he's purchased from our family friends and he's importing it to England. This is going to be the newest one in his fleet and best. <laughs> Good luck to him. <laughs> So we're 10 minutes away, we are now in Viewfort. So the trucks bring the material and stockpile here and the barges come in on the jetty down there. There's a large batch plant here on my right. This tractor unit was bought in 1990 and is spec to pull 100 tons. And they said this hasn't missed a beat. It's never had a breakdown. You can see the gear on it that is specified to do some hard work. Over here, we have a bowl mixer. The bowl mixers stay in this area and they are fed by that batch plant. It's a great setup. I've just never seen it in a tropical environment in St. Lucia. Loving it. I've had a great day, boys and their toys. Now this is fresh. This tastes different than the coconut water that I'd be buying in, <laughs> in the carton in London. Coconut water's finished. I'm driving through Labry, I just pull over and there's my uncle, <laughs> a long time ago. And he came over to England and he was working with us back when we had the yard in Cricklewood. And here he is, the first person to greet me when I step into Labry. That's How's it? it? More than good. More than good, good yeah. Alive and well. This is where the Louises are from. This is the second house. The first house, which was built in the 1920s, was unfortunately dismantled last year because it was unsafe. And now I'm just gonna have a look, see if any family are here and reminisce a little bit. All right, so hear this, walk on memory lane. I got the beating of my life because of this man. So when I was young, my mum was in charge of my haircut. And my mum told me, you will appreciate your hair when you get older and you don't have any. She was right, I do appreciate my hair. But those times now I had the Jackson 5, I had the round kind of microphone type head. And I landed in St. Lucia and I thought I was fresh. My uncle, has taken me for a haircut. This man obviously watched House Party, Kid and Play. He took all the sides off and gave me a flat top like this. 
and they put a D in the back of my head because at that time the haircut in St. Lucia was a girl a rush me. All now no girls have rushed me because of that haircut. But as soon as I came back, my mum saw my hair. What did she say? Bang, what have you done? Your nice hair, you don't appreciate your hair. And at that point he disappeared. <laughs> How's work here? But we know hotel there. We're doing some testing there. It's a heavy job, you know. We might yeah. finish all the way in maybe next year or something. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Work is good. The, 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 the money is good and everything, you know. Yeah. What are you doing? Electrical work? Electrical work, yeah. Construction's in the blood, man. Yeah. What are you doing anyway? What's them oh, colours okay. in your head? Wait, go away. I want to know why that person has a green shirt and that person has a haircut and all of that. Well, he's going to a party, he said, on Wednesday. That's why he has a haircut? Yes, ma'am, for your birthday party. Ah, uh, but today's Thursday, so why is all dressed up so clean? What type of embarrassment is that? Why is it dressed up so clean? <laughs> <laughs> the guys have come from England. They're filming, mum, look. <laughs> they can't see you waving, mum. <laughs> My mum's waving, but... I took the guys and they had coconuts by the side of the road. They had the coconut jelly. They, they're experiencing. Uh, where, where, where is... Um... Terry. Terry's in the yard, mum. <laughs> no, Terry's got things doing. <laughs> and today's Thursday, he's in the yard. Yeah, today's Thursday and Terry's in the yard. All right, mum. Okay. All right, see ya. Bye, bye, bye. My mum's flying down tomorrow. Her party's next week to celebrate 70 years. And I, I couldn't think of anything else I could do to honor her. We're going to head back up to the north of the island and try and grab some dinner. But it's been a lovely, nice day. Friday, not in the yard. I'm at the stadium, which I called a cricket stadium earlier, and I was corrected, and I was told that there are multiple sports which are played here. This is the stadium in the north of the island. There is another stadium in the south, however, St. Jude's Hospital burnt down, so the stadium down south is being used as a hospital temporarily. A hospital is being rebuilt, and as soon as it's ready, the stadium can be used for sporting events again. There's some improvements happening, so I'm just casting my eye over everything. I'm gonna see a friend of mine, Kurt at Blueprint, in a little bit, but I just thought I'd pop into the stadium first, because this stadium is something which is very important to St. Lucia, and this is somewhere where a lot of tourists come. I was talking to Meds earlier. I've been telling you about our Google AdWords campaign with the plum, blue and grey slate. Now some sales have started to come through but it's really ir immeasurable. Have those sales come through because the weather's getting better and we're in March and moving towards Easter or has it come from the Google AdWords? So Meds had a call with Google earlier and Google said um, that the campaign was doing really well but they think there's changes that need to be made to the website. And I asked Meds to explain it to me and they said that when people land you don't have a call to action button. I was like what do you mean of course we do we've got click here to buy it and they said no because we're doing a campaign which lands on the decorative aggregates page and then people have to navigate but why did we do that and Med said because that's what Google said was best and at that point I'm not going to say that Google will pull in a fast one but what I will say is that someone who works in AdWords day in and day out would know that. But I've done Google AdWords campaigns in the past. And for me, the way to convert those clicks into sales is there needs to be three separate campaigns. So at the moment, we have one campaign and everybody lands on the decorative aggregate page. So if you were looking for Plum Slate, when you land on the decorative aggregate page on aggregatesupplier.com, you've now got to click on the decorative aggregate you want. That is long, you're wasting time. That split second means that you've paid for a click and then you're losing it. For me, you need to make three separate campaigns, each with its own keywords, which are slight variations between the three materials, and then they need to be linked to the actual page of the material that you are trying to shift and where you're trying to convert clicks to sales. So I've asked Meds to create another two campaigns and alter the current one we've got because I'm specifically trying to sell the Slate products at the moment, which arrived in the yard maybe a bit prematurely by train. And speaking of trains, the train from yesterday, which was meant to arrive today, hasn't because of a problem and it came round the corner from the yard down to Colnbrook, it's loaded and it got sent back and we didn't get the material because there was a possession on the line or something like that happened. Meh.
Thank you. Good morning. Where's Kirk? Upstairs. Upstairs, yeah? Okay, thank you. Selling tires as well. That wasn't me. What's he building here? Oh my god. Look at the gate as well. That's a sick gate, man. Brother. <laughs> How's the man doing? Hey, is this all is this all your setup, yeah? Yeah. You didn't tell me you had a hardware store. 2021, in the heart of COVID. So you're building and you're selling building materials? So we do building, we do equipment rentals, and we do... You're doing plant hire as well, yeah? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of put me to shame. You've got the, blue, the blueprints here and the... Yeah. Full kit. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the same setup as me with the cameras as well when you're at your desk. Well, yeah, yeah? you, you kind of see everything. And what's the building made out of? This is a container. This is a container and I just kind of framed on between the two. No way. Yes, sir. Uh, two 40 foot containers. And what's I, it sitting on top of? Um, it's on top of another two 40 foot containers down below. <laughs> and the two containers down below, one lends itself to the hardware store and the other one is my paint room. It's about to get humid. All right, so from here I can see the two 40 foot containers here and another two here. So the entire yard has been structured around 40 foot containers. Wait, I thought I was doing bits with containers. That's the way to go. Very modular, eco-friendly, very, very quick. That's a newest edition, so it's not been outfitted as yet, but everything else you'll see around the place is blue. From even the, the bike that we use for small errands is blue. Pick up a check, drop off a check. More collector check. Yeah, yeah. well, well, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, sir. How are you? Is this dad? Yes, I think so. You think so, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> Depends on who's asking. Depends on who's asking. If he has to pay a bill for me, no. Yeah. Wait, hold on. So, so dad's working here as well, yeah? Dad runs his own construction You have company. your own construction own business. Construction, yes. So you learn from dad about construction. Everything. Everything. Yeah. And, and he surpassed me, right? And he... Oh, ah, definitely. Yes. He's, he's on the ball. He surpassed me. Big time, you know? So dad's coming into Sons Builders Merchants to buy... I just purchased. You just, just purchased? purchased. Like, did you give dad discount? No, uh, that's one thing he doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> I need to say that. <laughs> that's one thing he doesn't do. You didn't give dad no, no discount. discount? Check it out. It's a small purchase. Just on site at the moment, if you see in the distance, there are a lot of homes which were never finished. This was an international developer who came to St. Lucia and they ran out of money about 15 years ago and it has sat there and done nothing. It's not easy to develop in the Caribbean. What you need to find yourself is a good contractor. Someone has managed to purchase this and now work is gonna begin. It's great for the economy and it's a fantastic site with a great view. It's never good to see somebody struggling financially and it's taken 15 years, but hopefully there's gonna be a good end product now. So it's Friday night. I've taken some of the lads out to uh, sample some of the local cuisine and go to the street party. We're at a sports bar. We tried to catch the AJ uh, Francis and Garner fight, but we missed it. But I looked up, what do I see? Yes, in QVR Ashfield shirts there, see? I told you, you and your sponsor a football team. It goes far and wide. That could be up there for the next 10 years. <laughs> Couldn't love that. Thank you. What's happening? I took the boys to uh, St. Lucian Street Party. A geezer comes up to me, he goes, how's Michael? How do you think Michael would, how do you think Michael would get on at the St. Lucian Street Party? You're known in St. Lucia, mate. That's good, it's good. One of yours is passing me on the other side of the road again. I think it's uh, 1991, Daff. Yes. <laughs> what time is it there? The time now is 3.41. I'm in St. Lucia, but I feel like I'm I feel like I'm in London. I'm looking at a row of traffic. So where are you staying? I'm staying at my auntie's. Sorry. I'm staying at our auntie's. How's our auntie been? She don't know Donovan's girl now. She not well, I don't work for O'Donovan's anymore. Yeah. R O D haulage. R O D haulage, but no, my auntie didn't have an O'Donovan's top on or a Ryan O'Donovan haulage top on for some reason which I don't understand. Nor did anyone in St Lucia at the street party, or anyone on any other street in St Lucia on any day of any week of any month of any year. Thank you. And any, all right, okay, you, you won that one. Then. Daniel, have a good time while you're away anyway, mate. All right, pal. I'll speak to you in a couple of days. I'll speak to you soon, mate. Thank all you. All right, see you, mate. Bye. -bye. Bye. Saturday. 
not in the yard. I'm taking Jav and Friday to the airport in the south because they're heading back to London. It's gonna be an overnight flight. Friday tried to stay here and negotiate to be head of the video team at Blueprint Construction. He tried to swerve, man. And last night at the street party in Groselet, Jav said that he wasn't coming back, but Jav has now decided that he is gonna return home because he's gonna miss his family. Hopefully the boys have had a good time. Uh, they've seen St. Lucia and they've experienced a different way of life. Bro, we want to mind one of these don't decide to head with us or something. Saturday afternoon, I'm down south. I've collected my cousin Julie and my mum. My mum's up there somewhere. Wave. <laughs> We're making the trip back up north. Gonna spend some family time, head out this evening. <laughs> and that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 179. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click down here for last week's episode, which was number 178. I'm just filming the scenery. <laughs>